Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we're discussing none other than the anatomy of the larynx. Before I get started with the video, I just want you all to know that every difficulty comes ease and that's what I've applied on this video. I've made larynx a very fun concept. So continue watching if you want your dry larynx to become colorful. So what exactly is the larynx? This tube, what does it do? Why is it so important? Why is it so darn difficult? Larynx is basically a windpipe, all right? So like the pharynx was an air passage and a food passage pipe, but the larynx, it's only for the wind. It's basically a gatekeeper. So he's like, okay, air, yes, you can pass in, but food, no, get the heck out of here. That's the role that the larynx plays. It's right behind the laryngopharynx. And uh, in the laryngopharynx is a decision whether the food will go into the esophagus or whether it will go into the lungs. And that is not happening because of the larynx. It lies uh, in front of the C3 to C6 vertebra in males. But for uh, children and for females, it lies a little higher from C1 to C4. Now let's talk about the basic structure or the skeletal framework of the larynx. The larynx, you know how uh, every area was made up of either bones or cartilages in case of the larynx the larynx is only made up of cartilages and how do we remember these cartilages that i will talk about now if you want to make a place fun there has to be a friend group right so the cartilages we're about to study are going to be individuals of that friend group so the cartilages are about three unpaired cartilages and three paired cartilages the unpaired cartilages are the major and most important thyroid cricoid and epiglottic cartilage and the paired ones are tiny the erytenoid corniculate cuneiform that sounded all like gibberish well let's talk about that friend group again and talk about our first cartilage the thyroid cartilage now thyroid cartilage is the main cartilage of the larynx why do i call it the main it's the largest one amongst all so the one you can see right here this is the thyroid cartilage it is formed by two laminas all right so these two laminas this is the right lamina this is the left lamina they meet in the midline although their anterior borders are bound to each other in the midline these uh, form the laryngeal prominence known as the Adam's apple due to the union of anterior borders of the two lamina. Then what about the posterior borders of these lamina? These posterior borders are free as you can see over here, free. They do not go behind, they just go here. They're like wings flapping in the air, mid air. They do not complete the circle. You can see right here, this is a right lamina that has an anterior border joining with the lamina of the opposite side and it has a free posterior border. The posterior border now has two projections, one above, one below. The above projection is known as a superior horn or superior cornua of the thyroid cartilage, whereas the inferior one is known as the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage. Now, uh, interestingly, this is the hyoid bone. So you can see that the superior cornua is going to join with the hyoid bone above and the inferior inferior horn is going to join with the cricoid cartilage line below. So that's what you can see right over here. Uh, the inferior horn over here is going to form the joint. It's going to be a proper joint. It's not just a ligament connecting. It's a proper joint with like whole joint cavity. The superior horns are going to be connected via the lateral thyrohyoid ligament. And both are connected by the thyrohyoid ligaments. Whereas middle uh, between them lies median thyrohyoid ligament all together known as a thyrohyoid membrane. Let's talk about the attachments of this thyroid cartilage. I want you to divide the attachments into three areas and let's do a little bit of the mnemonic. On the anterior surface of the laminas of the right and left halves of the thyroid cartilage lies this oblique line. On that oblique line, you have to attach the H, S and P. You're going to connect the thyroid cartilage to the H, to the S, to the P. H for obviously the hyoid bone. So first muscle on the oblique line will be the thyrohyoid. Next muscle will be the S. S is for the sternum, so sternothyroid. P is for the pharynx, and we've talked about this muscle, it's the thyropharyngeus part of the inferior constrictor muscle. So these three, plus a little bit of attachment I want you to remember over here, obviously where it is going to bind with the cricoid cartilage, cricothyroid muscle will be attached there. So we're done with the cricothyroid and HSP. Next part of the attachments we're gonna talk about from superior horn to the inferior horn, there are three muscles that are going to exist there. These muscles are the ones that we studied in the pharynx. Stylopharyngeus, paratopharyngeus, and the sylpingopharyngeus all are going to be attached there. Next, we have this area right here. We're talking about the inner aspect of the thyroid cartilage because inner aspect contains the epiglottic cartilage. What will connect thyroid and epiglottis? It will be the TE, the thyroepiglottic ligament. And let's add another muscle to it, thyroepiglottic muscle. Apart from that, we have the VV and we have the V and V. 
On each side of the inner aspect of the thyroid cartilage, there will be vestibular fold and the vocal fold. Vestibular lying above, vocal lying below. So on each side, you have all of these. So that was all you need to know about the thyroid cartilage. Now let's move on and talk about the cricoid cartilage. So here comes the best friend of the thyroid cartilage. And why do I say that? Because the thyroid cartilage does not have any posterior border. So the thyroid cartilage goes like, ah, if I fall down, who will pick me up? And that's where the cricoid cartilage comes into play, goes like, I got your back, man. So this thyroid cartilage posteriorly will have the cricoid laminas all right so basically this is the cricoid uh, cartilage it's shaped like a ring and you all know that a ring shows commitment and mr cricoid is uh, committed to the thyroid cartilage it says i will always have your back so it has these uh, large posterior uh, border or to it all right so the cricoid cartilage firstly anteriorly it forms the arch and posteriorly it has these lamina let me just show it to you over here you can see here this is the arch as it progresses posteriorly the cricoid cartilage becomes really large it becomes the lamina of the cricoid cartilage it is surprisingly more strong than the thyroid cartilage the cricoid cartilage superiorly it articulates with the cartilage called the arytenoid cartilage laterally it articulates with its bff the thyroid cartilage right over here you can see laterally it is going to articulate with the inferior cornuas of the uh, thyroid cartilage in that cricothyroid joint the attachments you need to know about the cricoid cartilage are only few. The cricoid is forming a bond only at with two people and that is the thyroid cartilage and the arytenoid cartilage. So the muscles that we're going to talk about are the cricothyroid and the cricoarytenoid. And how does that work? From anterior to the posterior, I want you to divide it into three places. The anterior most, the cricothyroid muscle will be attached to the anterior aspect of the arch. Cricothyroid uh, CT, the name says it, T is for the tensor, it is the tensor of the vocal cords. Going back on the anterolateral aspect or the lateral aspect of your cricoid cartilage will be the lateral cricoarytenoid. Obviously, because it's lateral aspect, lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. The cricoarytenoid muscle CA, A is for the adductor of the vocal cord, all right? And now, as we go posterior and we attach on the outer aspect of the posterior part of the lamina of the uh, cricoid cartilage, we'll have the same cricoarytenoid but posterior cricoarytenoid once again, an adductor of the vocal cord. That's all you need to know about the attachments of the cricoid cartilage. Let's move to the next cartilage.